We welcome you into Knoxville, Tennessee. SEC Hoops action coming your way. 2-0 in conference. Tennessee Lady Volunteers hosting the Mississippi State Bulldogs. We welcome you here at courtside. Dobson Bowling Arena, a fun one tonight. Former Lady Ball camera Harris, Andy Brock, excited to join you for this one. Gabe, you think back to last month, the Tennessee team maybe not quite living up to preseason expectations, barely hovering above the waterline. That's not the case anymore. Back-to-back -back really impressive conference wins. Conference play is here, and Andy, I think we're seeing a Tennessee team Team that is really starting to figure out who they are and what they're capable of. Excited to see how they continue it tonight. It was clear from the get-go, Tennessee had all the pieces it needed, just what's the right order, and they figured it out, even if that means for Kia Jackson coming off the bench. She's so good, playing with so much confidence right now. When she gets going, she's a hard player to stop. Her game is so versatile. She can take you off the dribble, post you up, guard any position, a player to watch tonight. Big game tonight for her for many reasons. Let's welcome in our third member, Sarah Detweiler. If there's one thing we know about Rakia Jackson, it's that she is getting it done on the floor. But she's getting it done by coming off of the bench. She's leading Tennessee in scoring, has had multiple 20-plus point games, and she's the team's second leading rebounder. So she's really embraced this six-woman role to the fullest. And to quote Coach Harper, she said, she's so easy to coach because she's so versatile. You just have to put her in a position to get the ball in her hands and then let her go do her thing. She's a hand for the opponent, which tonight, guys, will be her former team, the Mississippi State Bulldogs. When asked about the matchup, she said, you know, we treat every opponent the same. We're just going to go out there and continue to do us and stay within ourselves. But she did admit that she's really excited to play tonight. And if we see the same game of Rakia Jackson from Tennessee's last game against Alabama tonight, then we're in for a good one, guys. Yeah, it is often coach speak when you say, oh, it's just another game. You know, we're taking it one game at a time. This one, though, a lot of emotions to it. You've got your former team on the other side. A lot of familiar faces. Very exciting one for multiple reasons. Definitely. You know, when you face up a team you just played against, I, played for, I guess you, you can say, it's going to be emotion, but, you know, as long as she just sticks to the game plan, shouldn't be any concern. Let's get things rolling. Tennessee, a perfect 2-0 start in conference play. Mississippi State 1-1. One one. They're looking to get back in the win column. A lost Sunday against bitter rival Ole Miss. Here's Tess Darby right from the get-go. A heave from deep. She's starting it off early. That's the player that they're going to have to locate early in transition and any time she's on the floor. Tess Darby, three-point specialist for Tennessee, coming off a season-high 16 Sunday win for the Big Orange against Alabama. This is starting five. Sam Purcell goes with tonight here in Knoxville for the Bulldogs. Very similar look. Carter in the interior, certainly the piece to watch out for for this Mississippi State team. Before Rakia Jackson won Player of the Week this last week, it was her former teammate Jessica Carter. Carter, she's a big body post. She's so versatile in her game as well. She is just so lengthy and athletic. Tennessee's going to have to pick her up early. Bucket firing from the corner, back-to-back three-point attempts. This one off the front iron. Carter quickly inside, goes right back up. Following her shot, though, is her teammate, Jerkayla Jordan, for the deuce. Bulldogs have their first lead here in the early going. A very physical Mississippi State team, one of the best defensive teams, not just in the conference, but in the nation. They're going to give Tennessee a lot of looks to work with. Horston, nice drive, one-handed kiss off the glass. And that's what you want to see early from Jordan Horston, is being aggressive on the offensive end and attacking the basket. The ball is coming out in a man-to-man. -man. Three from the left wing off the mark. Jordan looking for her second straight bucket. Here's Jordan Walker. She'll let one fly, no good. Tennessee only... Now one for three from three, two for four to start from the floor. Freshman Debris Chapeau driving in on Sarah Puckett, a bit too strong on the finish. Big start out of the gates for both teams. Here's Horston in the paint, going to work on Alana Smith. Another really good finish for Horston. Alana Smith, she's a great defender, but you can't allow middle drives. Your help is not going to come from there. She has to force her baseline. 
Orston last night was recognized, award an award midseason top 25 list, most prestigious award in all of college basketball, signifying as her as one of the best players in the nation. There's Striplin inside. Set a screen for her teammate Darby now driving in. Normally comfortable around that three-point line. That time she took it to the rim. Jordan Horston starting off strong. You can see Alana Smith, she gave her that middle, so she was able to get to that lane without any help in the middle. But great drive by Jordan. Horston is senior, this Tennessee team. Preseason All-SEC first team. You see the numbers. Steadily improving each of her four seasons here on Rocky Top. I remember Jordan coming in as a freshman, and you know, she was playing that point guard position lately with her just being able to, and right there she scores. With the incoming of guards, it's really allowed her to open up her, her position and be more of a scoring threat for Tennessee. Uh, you name it. I mean, Coach Harper said she just loves figuring out where to best put Jordan Horson because she can play wherever. Huge offensive board there in the putback. Horson off to a great start, six points. Off it's a rebound for Jessica Carter. She's one of the best rebounders in the SEC, showing why there at the second chance point. Tennessee trying to quickly swing it. Mid-range for Darby, couldn't buy it, just rolls in and out. Anastasia Hayes the other way. Talk about Rakia Jackson playing against her former team. Anastasia Hayes is back here at Knoxville. She spent her freshman year with Orange and White. Orson, a hard drive in. Offensive foul is the call. Alana Smith, she got beat earlier that time. She accepted the contact. Jordan Horson being aggressive. Right here, you can see Stripling trying to go ahead and set her a screen, but got the charge instead. Kia Jackson's checked in for Tennessee, first off the bench. It is the Lady Balls by four here in the early going. Jordan, baseline, reverse, can't get it to go. Looking for Jackson, trying to get her first touch out of play. I mean, how how hard does it have to be? You, you, you start to get settled in, you've played four or five minutes, you, you think you're starting to get comfortable, and all of a sudden you look up and Pia Jackson's checking into the game. You know, when we <laughs> talked to her earlier, you know, she likes coming off the bench. She thinks it's a good opportuni opportunity for her to kind of analyze the game, see where she can take advantage of. And she's been doing a great job with this so far. Tess Darby unconscious from deep. She knocks in her second tray of the quarter. Tennessee is looking for Tess Darby before she was just one of those players. If she gets it, she'll shoot it. If, they're, if she's open, now they're looking for her. Hayes hard to the rim. She gets her first points of this matchup. And a good answer from the Bulldogs. Horston now clobbered up, clogged in the lane by this stifling Bulldogs defense. Other way, Poe the freshman wants a three, yes! I think people wanted to travel on that one. Massive momentum shift there for Mississippi State. Here's Jackson, can't respond on the other end. Anna Smith picked up her dribble. Here's Hayes, tangled up, just firing one up off the mark. Really fast paced, up tempo start to this ball game. No look dish, Rakia Jackson, there's that one two punch. Orston to Jackson for two. And that's her game. She can post you up. She has so much size and length, but again, she can take you off the dribble as well. You got to respect her in all parts of her game. Three again, another try from Poe, nails it. That's back to back for the freshman. So mature when we spoke to Debrisha Poe. Doesn't feel like she's afraid of the bright lights of SEC play. It, exactly that. 
being a freshman, you have to have that transition of high school to college. And she's been addressing so well. She says that her, this is a veteran team. She says that her teammates have really been, you know, just keep being that positive impact for her. And just letting her know she has to take it game by game. I'll tell you, both these teams are really good rebounding the ball. Both already have a pair of really crucial offensive boards. Another three ripped from Mississippi State off the mark. They're two of five from long distance. Jordan Walker picks up a foul and finally gives us a stoppage. Quick start, up tempo. The three balls flying. Both teams ready to go here tonight. Off and rolling here from Thompson Bowling Arena. Lady Vols holding a slight advantage, 17-14 over the visitor Bulldogs. Tennessee, 2-0 start to SEC play. It's the third straight year they've done so over with Coach Kelly Harper as the head coach. And a big win on Sunday, 89-76 against Bama. And Cam, really everyone got involved. Exactly. When you have so much debt and so many people and players that you can go to offensively, it creates such an advantage for your team. You have to respect all five players on the court because anybody can step up and have a great night. And you see the numbers. Four Lady Vols in double figures. Rakia Jackson, SEC Player of the Week for a reason, but all season highs for Tess Darby, Jillian Hollings, and Jordan Walker. You don't usually see four double digits for Tennessee and, and not see Jordan Horson, but she did some other things. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> you know, again, that's just an advantage for Tennessee. They said, Coach Kelly said her last five games have been their best play. Have they arrived? No. But she's so encouraged by what the team is doing and the players who are stepping up, especially in the absence of Tamara Keith. All right, let's bring back in Sarah Detweiler. Yeah, you guys mentioned that there were multiple Lady Vols in double digits against Alabama on Sunday, but the name that was not on the stat sheet was Jordan Horson. And don't get me wrong, guys, she was really close. She had nine points and nine assists. But regardless of what's on the stat sheet, she is a playmaker. After the game, Coach Harper said she is a threat when the ball is in her hand. Unfortunately for her, there's other people that she can find, which after all was why her assists were so high. She said, we can move her around. She can get on the boards. We can post her up. She can shoot out in the perimeter. She's such a playmaker and she's such a threat that she's dangerous. And it all adds up, guys, because I did the math and that was at least 18 points off of just Jordan Horson's assists alone. Guys. Yeah, not bad. I think she could take a, a night where she scores nine points and has nine assists. Yeah. I think she'll take that. She could score double digits any night, but nine <laughs> assists, that ties a career high. That's impressive. Wow. She's able to score right out of the break there. Tennessee have up the lead to five. First real timeout here of this ball game. We'll see how both coaches are able to maybe try to get their team settled in. A really up-tempo start as we were talking about during the break. A lot of three-pointers we've seen from both ends. That's a miss from Poe. She was two for two before that one. Here's Powell. Off the dribble drive. Hollingshed wants a three. That's no good. Jordan Horston rebound back up. Can't buy it. Foul on the floor. You got to love the second chance effort by Rakia. That's just hustle. Just getting to the board. Nobody's boxing you out. Get yourself another opportunity. Next in four points. You mentioned SEC Player of the Week playing against her former team, Mississippi State Bulldogs. She spent three seasons. Here's Jordan, dumps it off for Poe again. Hot hand, was two for two from behind the arch. She's missed her last two now. Foul the other way. In for Hollingshed, one-on-one -on -one battle. That's where Coach Harper likes the matchup. When Jillian Hollingshed is one-on-one, -on -one, they want to feed her. Great post-up. She did her work early. She knew she has that size advantage over Poe. Great post-up, great feed. 
two from Hollingshed. Here's Alana Smith, hard to the basket, off the mark, got her own rebound. Those offensive boards are going to come in handy. Tennessee already has five. Bulldogs, that's their third, another second chance basket for Mississippi State. Darby again from the right corner, no good. Off, it's a rebound, Rakia Jackson swooping in. The hustle by Rakia Jackson, picking up exactly where she left off. Somebody has to put a body and box her out. It's a 6-0 run, excuse me, 8-0 run now for Tennessee. Lead things by seven. Jackson six points already against her former team. Here's Anastasia Hayes. Shot clock not on her side. Tries to dish it off. Carter, one second left. The Bulldogs, they don't get the shot off. It's a different look for Tennessee defensively in this game against the Mississippi State team who has a lot of balance inside and out. You talk about their last opponent, Alabama, they like to live around that three-point line. But Mississippi State, they present a lot of issues in terms of their post play. Jessica Carr, you always got to keep a circle around her, but clearly they also could shoot the three. Mississippi State in the man-to-man -man now on Powell. Powell will take the shot. She had space, knocks down the mid-range. Oh. Tennessee shooting above 55% from the floor here in quarter number one. Shot 53% in their win against Alabama on Sunday. Picking right back up where they left off. Asia Day Johnson pulls up. Off it's aboard Jessica Carter with the time dwindling down. Still a final shot here. Jackson not close. So good bucket for Mississippi State. Heavy offense in quarter number one. I mean, off and rolling. It's Tennessee by seven through ten. One quarter in the books here from Knoxville. You see head coach of the Bulldogs, Sam Purcell, in his first season coaching up his squad. He's on the road. He's feeling good. He was in high spirits when we talked to him earlier today. Happy to be back in Knoxville. Really doing a great job in his first year with this Mississippi State Bulldogs team. Got them off to an 11-2 start non-conference play. 1-1 one one now in the SEC, and he feels like he's got a group that can win now. Watching their shoot around today, it was just so fun. He has <laughs> such great energy. You can tell that he really cares about his players and that they respect him. The relationship between him and his players is just phenomenal to watch. It was just so fun to watch. and. You know, I, I just know they had that great bond and relationship. A blast here at shoot around. Let's welcome back in Sarah Detweiler. Yeah, guys, when Coach Perel was talking to us, he said what's really unique about this first season for him is the returners who came back after last season. You know, Mississippi State has been through a lot of turnover in recent years as far as coaching goes. First with Vic Schaefer in 2020 going to Texas, and then with Nikki mccray Penson stepping away for health reasons mid-season last year. So when Coach Purcell got to Starkville in March, he said, they didn't come here for me. I came here for them. And so for veteran players like Anastasia Hayes and Jessica harder to stick with him and buy into this program it's really special guys yeah that was such an important first focus for Sam Purcell once he came over from Louisville he he just got off of a final four run with the Cardinals also so he didn't have a lot of turnaround time he gets to Starkville and the first thing he does is like hey I've, I've got to get some of this core back I gotta convince them that hey we are not here to rebuild we're here to retool and, and win and he did he brought back Anastasia Hayes, Jessica Carter, a lot of really key pieces that the Bulldogs have had the last few years. Definitely, and this is a veteran team. They, they're they used to a system, that, a system that came before them, and the fact that they really trust him and brought into his program is huge. Yeah, it speaks volumes to who he is as a coach, and I mean, a primarily recruiting player development guy at Louisville as well as being you know, a scouter as assistant coach, you can just see how much he's already poured into into the relationships. That was, he said, his first goal. Just, I just want to pour back into these players and know what I'm all about. That's the first step. 
And it's hard to think of any Power 5 school that's had a, a two-year stretch like Mississippi State has had, just in terms of, as Sarah mentioned, dealing with the coaching turnover. That year after the COVID year, you only played 19 games, a lot of cancellations. I mean, this matchup got canceled two years ago. A lot of players in and out shorthanded the last two years. Just the fact that you're at this point able to bring some stability to this team again and, and have them in a position where they can compete in this conference. There's Johnson, fake inside, turn around. Jordan Horson said, nope, we'll take that one. We've seen just about everything from Horston. Little move almost lost her footing. Jackson just beyond the free throw line, too strong. Offensive board, Jasmine Franklin. Tennessee now their seventh offensive board, dominating the glass. It's the effort right there. Jessica Carter, she didn't really see where Franklin was, missed that box out. Mississippi State's going to have to lock in, but great job by Tennessee being aggressive. Out rebounding the Bulldogs, 18-11. Both teams, though, a healthy amount of second-chance points in the early going. What a turnaround jumper. Jessica Carter, she is off to a great start. Already eight points for her. Mississippi State now has transitioned to a zone. They were in a man-to-man -to, -man to close the first quarter. That was expected. Both Sam Purcell, Kelly Harper both very aware. They're going to throw a lot of different looks defensively. That time Tennessee beats the zone. Sarah Puckett for three. Great job by Sarah Puckett creating that space. When they're playing this zone, they really want to pack it in and just strip that interior. Great job by Puckett to knock it down. Cam, how hard is that as a player when you, you, you see man-to-man -man and all of a sudden it shifts up to zone? Is it hard to kind of switch your focus a little bit? It, it, it definitely can be, you know, but that's why, you know, we practice it. We, we practice the different schemes, and, and it's an adjustment, but you just have to be locked in and know what you're going to be running against whatever defense they're throwing at you. Jasmine Powell picks it off, heading the other way, draws contact, the foul, and the bucket. Strong. I'm just waiting for one of them to give me a flex. Like, when they just <laughs> give me the flex, that's what I'm waiting for. Strong move. She's a, a little player. She's on the shorter side, but the strength is there. I'd say a play like that deserves a flex. All business, though, for Jasmine Powell. Earned every bit of this extra free throw. Timeout. Have to wait. Jasmine Powell will state at the start of the second for Tennessee. Coach Kelly Harper leading the troops here early second quarter. Lady Vols, they've upped their lead to double digits over Mississippi State. Coach Harper sporting the orange suit tonight. Turner Lady Vols, as mentioned, they've really had the battle this season. It was almost a month ago, as we said, a team that was really struggling just to find consistency. They had a lot of players in and out, a couple of injuries they were dealing with. They've gone through a lot of adversity, uh, really starting to dial things in and playing more and more confident each game. I think adversity is the best word to use, Andy. They face so much of it. But again, right now, perfect timing with SEC play here, starting to figure it out and coming to their own. It's, it's just, it's going to be a battle all season, you know, and as long as they stay together and, again, focus on themselves, which Coach Kelly preaches to them every day, is, it's about us. It, it doesn't help when you play the nation's toughest schedule and you're trying to figure things out in, in dealing with a lot of new players, a lot of missing players. It, it has been an absolute gauntlet. All six losses, currently the teams in the top 25, four of them out of the top ten. But, and that's a testament to how Kelly feels about her team. She said this is a, isn't a team that's going to respond to a, a weaker schedule. You know, she knew her team was capable of handling the adversity, and it's going to pay off for them. Uh, Coach Harper said it was that Stanford road trip they took. They went all the way out to Palo Alto. They didn't win that game. But they took number two Stanford really down to the wire. It just kind of ran out of gas in the fourth quarter. Stanford ended up winning that game 77 to 70. Tennessee had a lead late in the third quarter, 15 lead changes. That was almost kind of like a, hey, we can do this type of moment. Things started to click then. That was the start of this last 
about five games that really have really seen what they're like capable of, you know, and I think Kelly is just really happy with where they're at right now. Again, it's not where they want to be, but she likes the improvement. Coach Harper has thrown out six different starting lineups this year, but finally finding some sort of consistent starting five and in, in consistent minutes. You think back to the beginning of the year, they were throwing out five subs at a time. It was almost like hockey rotations. And you got to a point where now you finally settled in. Who would have thought out of all, they returned four starters and 10 players. You bring in another crop of transfers who had a combined 205 starts, and then all of a sudden you got two players in your starting lineup that hadn't really started before. Yeah, she described it as a puzzle. They have all <laughs> the right pieces, but they're just trying to figure it out. Anastasia Hayes, really nice finish. Mississippi State cuts it back to single digits. Bulldog still in the zone. Horston trying to read it. Sarah Puckett. Horston in the middle. Rakia Jackson, good find, but Jackson can't get it to go. She missed that one, but in these zones, that baseline in the middle where the SEC is are the sweet spots to break down zones. So good job by Rakia Jackson to work those areas. Jessica Carter unconscious. She's already got 10 dialed in, especially from that mid-range spot. She has been a struggle to defend. And Purcell clapping it up for his defense. Mississippi State, they've got the Stark Vegas jerseys on the front as well. Feeling good, but here are the numbers of Jessica Carter. I mentioned she was player of the week in the SEC right before Rakia Jackson earned those honors. A great story, stepped away from the team last season, focused on her mental health, and has come back. And, and Coach Purcell says she's really turned into one of the best posts in the country. She definitely has. She's just so good. She's so athletic. You don't typically see a player her size who can score the way that she scores. Bucket inside, Hollingshed, jumper, trying to beat that zone. Jackson off its board, swatted away. Bit of jawing after the fact, a technical has been issued. Might be on Jerkayla Jordan. See Jordan and, and Jackson getting into it a bit, former teammates, teammates last yeah. year. I mean, you knew the stakes of this game. Emotions run high when you're facing your former team. And that's the first time we've really seen them boil over to an extent. It's to gonna be about composure tonight. Starting to sort things out. It looked like a, a technical foul had been administered. Yeah, I saw the rep they, they, say take. The signal was given. It, it, it was. Carter got the block shot. <laughs> and then Jordan, Yeah, no, she it, had to buck a little bit <laughs> on Rakia. So it was initially issued a technical. They, they have taken the technical off. So just a simple inbounds for Tennessee. Darby can't connect. Bulldogs will regroup, so a little bit of chaos there, it was all sorted out. Here's Hayes on the drive, trying to go up strong, no. Rebound Hollingshed. Bulldogs on a 6-0 run at the moment. Lady Vols haven't scored in their last two and a half minutes. One of the things that Coach Purcell said is that his team has to make shots. They can't afford to get in foul trouble. When they don't make their shots, they get a little scrambled. So they just have to keep locked in and take it one quarter at a time. And Tennessee's having all kinds of fits with the zone right now. They can't seem to really get a good look that they're comfortable with. And you can see the Bulldogs have a bit of momentum. Heavy man-to-man -man in the first quarter. Tennessee shot over 50% from the floor the first 10 minutes. That's now dipped to 44%. Bulldogs, we mentioned, one of the better defensive teams in the nation. They're third in terms of limiting their opponents about 50 points per game. Right now, defensive effort has turned up a notch here in the second. 
Mississippi State, knowing that this zone defense is giving Tennessee some problems, Tennessee's just going to have to settle in. They they defended this. They had offense on this defense all season, you know, in practice. They know what to do. They just have to execute their plays. Right, just looking ahead now, turning your direction to our Wednesday basketball double header. That's next Thursday. It's a good one. Angel Reese undefeated LSU in Columbia, Missouri. They take on Haley Frank, 13 and two Tigers over there. Seven Eastern, six Central. Then we got Texas A&M hosting these Lady Bulls. Both games right here on SEC Network and the app. Angel Reese, she's playing such good basketball so good. right now. It's fun to watch. Unbelievable. It feels like a double-double per night. LSU is a fun team to watch. A lot of people thought, you know, what's going to happen when LSU steps into conference play? So far, so good. One of the better offenses and defenses combined in the nation. It's going to be a fun year in the SEC, I'll tell you what. A lot of teams have looked really sharp out of the gates. I mean, we saw probably one of the more gritty physical games on Sunday between Mississippi State and Ole Miss. And, and Coach Purcell, he said and he knew it was going to be a dog fight. Either you're going to be the dog or you're going to be the dog food. And in SEC <laughs> play, whew, any team can step up and have a good night. So you got to bring it every game. And that's one of the things we brought up with Coach Harper as well. You know, you get out to a 2-0 no start, but it's a long two months right here. You've got to be sharp every single night. And also, you know, manage load expectations here. I mean, these players are going Thursday, Sunday, Thursday, Sunday. It's, it's a long grind for sure. These two teams that were chocked full of vets, they've been through the season before. Just the start of it here, early 2023. Here's Carter, mid-range. She's been really good from that spot. Can't hit that time. Horston rebound. Here's Horston. A little contact. Anna Smith foul on the floor. That was a little body bump. Alana Smith, she didn't move her feet. Her body got that foul. But Alana Smith is such a great defender for this Mississippi State team. You know, talked about Coach Purcell's ability to retain a lot of the talent from this Bulldogs team last year. He also brought in a lot of talent of his own through the transfer portal. Alana Johnson came with him from Louisville. Tess Darby left open. Off the mark. Sarah Puckett off its board. Why not? Back up strong. No. And finally repossessed, Asian A. Johnson. And Hayes will slow it down. Hayes, four points, three assists here in the first half. Johnson in the interior, blocks. Jillian Hollingshed got a fist on it. I love the defense from Julian Hollingshed being that anchor for Tennessee. A confrontation at the basket. Sent back the shot of Charlotte Cole right underneath. Entry pass Johnson here. Contact offensive foul is the call on Johnson. Jordan Horston able to take it. She was smiling ear to ear on that one. We've, we've truly seen the versatility of Jordan Horston in this first half. She has been all over the place. Already eight points, three rebounds. Pair of assists as well. Turnover this time for the Lady Balls. Asian A. Johnson running the break. Back out to Brescia Poe. What a move, a little Euro. Euro step, right. Wow. Beautiful move. Pulling out all the bag of tricks. Her first trip to Knoxville, just a freshman. Remember. Horston. All around the rim. Jackson, no. Back up, though, yes. Rakia Jackson. Right spot, right time. Missed the easy one, but stayed with it. Poe again. What a first half it's been. Debrisha Poe, her third three. She's locked in right now. She's got 11. Bulldogs within five.
Jackson again, yes. Back-to-back -back buckets, she's fired up. Great move. She didn't settle for that baseline jumper. She drove it to the basket, being aggressive. Smith, right wing. Here's Cole in the interior trying to find Hayes out of bounds, last touch Tennessee. Great cut by Hayes to move without the ball, to see that pass by Cole as well. That was a great look even though they didn't finish it. That's what they need to do is to see those looks and break down this defense. Worth noting Mississippi State tonight is without Danae Carter, sophomore forward. Picked up an injury in practice this week, so truly the Bulldogs down to about eight rotational players. Going to take a lot for these individuals to step up. Who can be that unsung hero, maybe? Jackson Great move. taking over, spin move. Spin wow. cycle. She has got three straight buckets for the Lady Balls. Lead is back to nine. Putting on a show against the former team. Johnson, Horston got a piece of it. Shot clock is off. Esmond Powell slow it down for the final try. Tennessee could push it to double digits. And Powell doesn't get the shot off. She wasn't aware of that shot clock, that last possession. But great job by Rakia Jackson. Beautiful basketball. Taking over against her former team there at the end of the quarter. She had Tennessee's final three points of the half and pushes the Lady Bulls lead up to nine. Another halftime lead for Kelly Harper in this crew. 44% from the floor, offensive rebounds, big story. Let's get it to Sarah Detweiler, who is with Coach Kelly Harper. Coach, your team has seen a lot of defenses with Mississippi State, so how have they been adjusting to them so far? I don't think that's been our strength thus far. Um, you know, we've done a decent job on the boards, getting some putbacks, but our, our offense hasn't been as fluid as it needs to be. And they're getting into the paint a lot. How are you hoping to limit their looks? Well, I think we can do a few different things on our post defense. Um, Perimeter defense, you just got to get down and guard. It's got to be one-on-one -on -one defense. Thanks, Coach. All right. Coach Kelly Harper and her team leading by nine at the break. We've seen tempers flare. We've seen up-tempo energy, some three-pointers. Fantastic 20 minutes. 20 more to come. Second half getting ready to start here from Knoxville. It's been a good first 20. Tennessee and Mississippi State. A little SEC hoops for your Thursday night. Happy to be with you here at Thompson Bowling Arena. Camera Harris, former Lady Ball, Andy Brock with you here courtside. Cam, uh, intense first 20 minutes. Up tempo from both teams. Neck and neck, battle to battle. What have you seen from both these squads? Just a battle, exactly what you said. Tennessee is coming out, playing really hard. Right now, being aggressive offensively. Jessica Carter, though, wow, she's playing so good right now. Being that force for Mississippi State, like she has been all season long, posting up hard, knocking down the mid-range jump shots. Whew, she's playing great basketball right now. Rakia Jackson, spin cycle. She is so impressive, so fun to watch. Getting and crashing those offensive rebounds. She's playing great basketball. Tennessee leading by nine at the break. Fresh out of the locker room, Sarah Detweiler is with Coach Sam Purcell. Coach, your true freshman, Brisha Poe, she's stepping up big tonight, 11 points already. How are you hoping to keep her in rhythm? Well, I told my guards, they're doing a great job driving and getting two feet in the paint, but can we drive and be unselfish and get open people shots? If we do that, not only will she hit shots, but I got some other kids who can too. And let's see if we can get this back to a five-point game by the end of the third. And Tennessee's beating you guys on the boards right now, so what's key to bringing more down? We got to box out. We're on the road. I told them the tougher team wins this game, so let's see how tough we can get here in the second half. Thanks, Coach. Right, thank you. Always the energetic Sam Purcell. Talked about what he wanted from his team. He said, you're either the dog or you're the dog food. They're going to try to bring some energy this second half. Here's a look at the numbers. First 20, and Sarah mentioned it, those rebounds. That's a big factor. Tennessee, 13 offensive rebounds in the first half. Mississippi State is going to have to box out this next half. Limit Tennessee on the boards. 
find somebody early, put a body on them. And then if you're Tennessee, you want to keep that up the second half. Continue to crash the boards, being active on the glass. So we'll see who steps up this next half to keep it going. Tennessee, their lead at one point was to 12. It's been cut back to nine. Mississippi State, they got as close to as five there in the second quarter. The Bulldogs chipping away. They switched up their defense first quarter to second quarter. Two teams projected pretty highly by their peers in terms of where they were supposed to sit in the SEC. It's, all, it's, it's early in conference play, so you never know where these teams are going to shake out by the time March comes around. Here's where they sat in the preseason media poll. Tennessee picked second by the coaches Mississippi State at a tie for Arkansas. I don't know how you tie, but they tied. So both these teams expected to do very well over the stretch of this season. And again, in SEC, any team can show up and have a great night, so you have to step up and be ready every single night you play. Now these teams will get each other twice this season. February 6th will be in Stark Vegas at the Hump. It's going to be a wide out, so both these teams will get a chance at their home territories. Mississippi State right out of the gates. The Brescia Poe did miss a beat. Another three right on cue. Great job to come out the second half and knock it down. She's been playing with so much confidence tonight. Needs to keep it going for Mississippi State to get back in this game. Averaging 10 points per game. She's already up to 14. And we're just getting started here in the third quarter. Still a lot of game to go. Trying to feed Striplin, and there's a turnover for Tennessee. Just the start Mississippi State was needing. Here's Hayes, top of the key. Poe again, why not? She can't miss. She cannot miss. It's back to back to open the half. Tennessee is going to have to get up into her. Just having a hand in her face is not enough. You got to pressure her and contest the shot. Tennessee does get a response. Test Darby. Feels like a, just a three point shootout tonight, Andy. Man. Tennessee, that was their 19th attempt. They've made four. Mississippi State, they're shooting 45% from beyond the arc, 5 of 11. A lot of those coming off the hands of Debris Chapeau. She has been unconscious from deep. All five of those makes are from her. Like we just said, it feels like a three-point shootout tonight. Poe playing so well, shooting with confidence. And then you have Tess Darby on the other end knocking it down. Tennessee looks for her to make those shots for them. Mississippi State in their last four games have shot 44% from three. They struggled a bit on Sunday against a good Rebels team, three of 13. They've certainly turned those fortunes around here at Knoxville. 45% where we stand. Be some free throws now for Alana Smith. Mississippi State is a team that gets rattled if they're not scoring the ball well. They're going to just have to continue to be disciplined. Even if they're not putting the ball in the basket, you can still contribute to the game in other ways. Smith knocks down a pair. Not a lot of free throw shots for either team in the first half. That was just the third and fourth attempt for Mississippi State in this game. Tennessee just two for three at the line. Cross court feed again to Darby from Horston. Rakia Jackson ended off the second quarter, three straight baskets. Can't get her first attempt to go in the third. Hayes dribbles right off Jackson's foot. Uh, and it'll stay Mississippi State way. I'm, I'm going to have to agree with the fans on that one. <laughs> I think it rolled off of Hayes' foot. Fans one way, decision another. Stay with Mississippi State. Anastasia Hayes and her return back to Rocky Top, third time facing her former team. She's really reinvented herself in a big way. Such a force offensively for the Bulldogs last year. Second team all SEC, third in the SEC, a little over 18 points per game. And when Sam Purcell came in here, she said, he said, you know, we're, what do you want out of this next season? And she's really added so much variety to her game on a rebound again and, of course, on a pass again, second in the conference in terms of assists per game. And she, I remember playing with her my, her freshman year here at Tennessee, and she came in being so smart and so reliable, averaging almost 10 points a game her, a game her freshman year. 
Coach Purcell said he really wanted her to be more of a facilitator. We know she can score. We want to see her assist, improve, and she's doing a phenomenal job at that. Her assist to turnover ratio is incredible. Jordan Horston back-to-back -back buckets. Both these teams flying out of the gates here in this quarter. There's one make on the other end. Jordan then responded. Horston now back-to-back -back bucket. She's up to 12 on her line. Three Lady Vols already in double figures. Two for the Bulldogs. Left wing three, Smith lets it fire. The first Bulldog not named Abri Chapeau to knock one down. Back within three goes Mississippi State. Striplin, yes. Great heads up play from Jordan Horston. Striplin was just wide open. Nobody was on her open body. A lot of offense here in this third quarter. Cam, what do you feel like the secret has been? We, it felt like second quarter, the defense has started to settle in after a very up-tempo start. Now it's all offense second half. I think Mississippi State is doing a good job by penetrating and getting the ball in the paint, and then they're just knocking down the open shots. They're doing a good job offensively right now, getting back into this game. Haven't led Mississippi State since early first quarter. They've been chipping away, staying right there with Tennessee. Tennessee's first two wins in SEC play have both been by double digits. Looking for a third straight. Jessica Carter, contact, foul, and one. Anastasia Hayes with the move. She got stuck, and then she just was able to dish it down low to Carter for the and one. She saw that she had Jasmine Powell on her. That is just a, a huge height difference. This match. Good finish by Carter. When in doubt, let's find Jessica Carter on the court. It's so fun to have a player that, you know, is just gonna be there, you know, if, even on offense. You know, you can just kick it to her defense. You get blown by. She's right there to block the shot. It's fun to have a player like that on your team. Darby, other end. Bulldogs back within two. A chance to take a lead or pick up a tie here midway through the third. Tennessee man-to-man -man coverage. Hayes. Shot clock at five now for Hayes. On the drive, finds Jordan, can't hit the layup off the glass. Tennessee now with the ball. Good possession there for Mississippi State. Execution wasn't there on the finish. Mississippi State, they do such a good job with moving without the ball. You have to have those cuts and make your actions work for you. Kia Jackson there underneath. She's got 14 leading the Lady Vols. Home side back up four. Carter can't dribble. She's going to shoot off the mark. Carter, she's getting a lot of open looks at that mid-range area. Tennessee's playing far off of her. When she starts knocking them down, they're going to have to respect that a little bit more. Feet set, flushes it through. Tess Darby, she has been fantastic from deep. Her fourth three-pointer, she's got 13. Three-point barrage show here in the third quarter. Carter looking for Smith, and that's a foul interior on Jasmine Powell. Tess Darby gives Tennessee some separation, but Mississippi State not making it comfortable here in Knoxville. Mississippi State, perfect three for three from behind the arc this half. Two of them have been from Debris Chapeau. What a night so far. She is playing phenomenally right now, knocking down the three, shooting it with confidence, just being aggressive offensively. She is locked in right now, and it's fun to watch.
Her season slash career high, she is just a freshman, is 19 points. She's two away, already knocked down five triples. And you can see it. She's playing with a lot of confidence. We talked to her before the game, showed a lot of maturity. She said, you know, it, it has been an adjustment. She plays with a lot of veterans, a lot of players who have been through the ropes. They know what to do, and she's just soaked in that knowledge and, and plays with maturity beyond being a freshman. It was so fun to talk to her earlier. She's just a good person, you can tell, that really just wants to do well for her and her teammates. And she's doing a great job tonight. Oh, what a dish that time, but Jessica Carter can't finish. Darby picks it up, fires, can't hit. Offensive board for Tennessee. Offensive rebound number 15 for the Lady Balls. It's made a difference. Certainly winning that battle on the boards. Jackson versus Carter. Former teammate versus former teammates. Flash from Rakia Jackson. Jordan left wide, wide open. Mississippi State four for four from three this quarter. Seven of 13 for the game, 54% from behind the arc. Jackson again, no. I love that post up by Jill Hollingshed. Got Rakia Jackson a wide open look. Jordan one on one with Hollingshed. A bit of a height mismatch. Hollingshed stayed firm. Wins the battle. There's Powell, baseline. Contact. She'll take two at the line. She's so fearless. Again, she's a smaller player, but how she plays was just so much, so much aggression. She's just so gritty. It's, it's fun to watch. And not a lot of free throw shots for either team. That was one of the things that Sam Purcell wanted his team to work on after that Ole Miss game. It said how, for how physical of a game, he knew it would come back to little things. They shot just 50% from the free throw line. Tennessee, they've been shooting really well of recent from the free throw line. 77% in their last four. That first one off the mark for Powell. for two. Can't take the freebies. Hayes out of control the other way. Powell goes crashing in the Bulldogs bench. Again, you gotta love the intensity that Powell is playing with on both ends of the floor. She's getting after it. Look out. See, a few years ago, if I did that, it would be <laughs> fine. If, that, if I did that today, I would be sore oh, for yeah. the rest That's a no of the go. month. No go. Someone asked me to crash to a bench, not doing it. Quarter three for the Bulldogs. The first time they've missed from distance this quarter, but guess who? Debris Chapeau. Second chance try. Jump ball. Arrow pointing Tennessee way. No surprise there. Chapeau being active. She's getting after it tonight. See how much this Bulldogs team wanted to fight coming into Knoxville, coming after a, a tough emotional loss to a bitter rival. You've got a, a tough one on Sunday, South Carolina coming to the hump. This is a big one. Kia Jackson baseline, a little bit of contact. Foul on the floor. There's a little going back and forth between Rakia and her former team. Again, it's going to be a night about composure. You want to stay focused, have fun with it, but just can't let it get into your head. Here's Jackson, free throw line. Yes, Rakia Jackson having a night. 18 SEC Player of the Week. Feeling good. Tennessee obsolete.
guys are in for a good one here in Thompson Bowling Arena with Tennessee leading Mississippi State 59 to 51. And if you're watching, you might have seen Anastasia Hayes in a new role compared to what she was in last year. When first year head coach Sam Bursell arrived in Starkville, Mississippi, he had a new challenge for graduate Hayes. He asked Hayes to switch positions from shooting guard to being the Bulldogs point guard this season. Her response is pretty much, yeah coach, whatever I can do to win and get better, I'm willing to do. And when we talked to Coach Purcell about her stats from last season to this season, he said, hey, everyone wants to talk about how she's not scoring as much this season. How about we talk about how she's one of the top point guards in the country with assists? Coach Purcell said, it's a statement to this program because she could be shooting so much, but she's willing to pass and make her teammates better, which is something that's definitely going to make her stand out at that next level when she's looking to play in the pros next year, guys. Yeah, Coach Purcell said it simply. He said, you, you want to play at the next level, everyone can score. You've done the whole scoring thing. I mean, 26 and a half points per game when she was a Conference USA Player of the Year with MTSU. She's done the scoring. Now let's add those other factors to your game. That's so important. And she brings that bet mentality to the team, being a facilitator and just making the right play. She has a, such a high IQ. She can get it done from all parts of her game. Action off the mark. Rebound, Asian Nate Johnson. Hayes is trying to guide this Bulldog team. They're down the wire of the third quarter. Mississippi State had a, an early lead when it was 4-3 to three back in the first quarter. But they have certainly kept pace with this Lady Vol team on the road. And that's an offensive foul on Jessica Carter moving on the screen. You talk about some of the more intense, tougher environments to play in the SEC. You mentioned Thompson Bowling Arena. You mentioned the hump in Starkville. Both teams are going to get a dose of each other's home environment. Hard to win in this building. Tennessee just got win number 500 on Sunday, all time over Alabama. It's hard, but you love it. You love that support and the energy that you get from women's basketball here. It's no other feeling. Oh, goes crashing in the lane. Blocking foul on Jasmine Franklin. Jasmine Franklin trying to get that charge, but she wasn't there. She didn't set her feet in time. Got the blocking call instead. You got to love, though, when your post player is willing to sacrifice her body. I didn't do it much, <laughs> but you love you to like see it. You like seeing it. I don't yeah. know if you want to do it. I'm going to be the first one to clap for you. Different story when you're you're facing the hit on, on the other end. Good response from Alana Smith, able to buy the bucket. Foul on the other end. Tennessee by six, late third quarter. Just to put Jordan Horst into the line. Tennessee just two of five from the free throw line. Mentioned it's been a, a heavy focus for Tennessee. At the free throw line, they're 13 of 16 Sunday against Alabama. They've got a new project called simply Project Free Throw. Not too complicated of a name. <laughs> Hosted by Tamari Key. She's holding her teammates accountable on the free throw line. Tennessee without Tamari Key. She's taking that initiative for more on Project Free Throw. Let's welcome back in Sarah. Yeah, guys, Project Free Throw is basically just asking the players to shoot more free throws outside of practice. No minimum, no prereq, no competition about it, purely an accountability thing. And it's working. Last season, the Lady Vols shot 64%, but ever since conference play, they've been shooting 74% from the line. So, and like you mentioned, what's really cool is that Tamari has taken the charge on this project. She tracks all the shots, she adds them up, and then sends them back to the girls to see where she's at. Jordan Walker said, maybe this is just me, but if I see someone shooting more free throws than me, I'm like, okay, let me go shoot a couple more. And if you listen real close the next time they're at the line, guys, you might hear some echoes of Project Free Throw from the bench when the Lady Vols make one. Now we're going to take a sharp listen next time they're at the line. Mississippi State on the line this time around. I don't know if they say anything. They got a name for their free throw plan, but very cool initiative. Tamari Key out for the season. Diagnosis was blood clots in her lungs discovered early December. 
All-time career blocks leader for Tennessee. A really tough, a tough miss, all SEC player. It's a good way to keep her involved, almost acting like another coach. Yeah, even though she's not on the floor right now, she's still being that coaching figure for her teammates and just really being a, a great teammate, letting them know what she sees from the sideline. So her presence is definitely still felt. Final seconds of the quarter. Horston time winding down mid-range. Can't buy it. One second, no heat from Alana Smith, and that ends the quarter. And we are still just as close as we were when we started. 30 minutes in, it's Tennessee. I We've got a tight one here in Knoxville where Tennessee leads Mississippi State 61 to 54. Now, Brisha Powell has been a bulldog at heart ever since her basketball career began. Coming out of high school, she was a four-star recruit and ranked 84th nationally. So she had multiple schools that were looking at her, but the Mississippi Gatorade Player of the Year decided to stay close to home. One thing in particular she said that drew her to Mississippi State was the culture. One that she was able to experience back in the seventh grade when she attended a basketball camp in Starkville. She remembers working with now WNBA athlete Victoria Vivians back then and just being in awe of her and the program itself. So now being able to put on a Mississippi State jersey with her name on the back, it's just really a full circle moment for her. guys. Yeah, really cool to see that home state talent come into her own and have a game like she's having tonight here in SEC play. I mean, you see the numbers, 18 points and seven rebounds. Uh, talk about someone who, who's not afraid of the big stage. As a freshman. Uh, yeah. As a freshman, that's huge that she has so much confidence and that she was able to earn the trust from her coach and her teammates so early in her career. She has so much upside to her game, and she's an even better person. And you think about all the home state talent that's about to sprout out of Mississippi. I mean, Mississippi State Final Four appearance 2017, 2018. It'll be six years from that first Final Four appearance this spring when Mississippi State knocked off UConn, ended that 111-game win streak. I mean, what a Final Four game that was. That's now been six years since that first one. So you're going to start getting, you know, kids coming up like Debris Chapeau who idolize those teams. You're, you're seeing the first of, of what's going to be many. Six years. Andy, I feel so old. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. But, you know, it's just the talent and the it, it's the testament to the involved how the evolution of women's basketball is. And it, it's fun. It's fun to watch and to see the game grow as it is. Yeah, and that was one of the cool things about Sunday's Ole Miss-Mississippi State game being so fun. It's, you know, Ole Miss and Coach Yo, a team that made the tournament last year, they're starting to really get a lot of momentum in that program. Just really good for Mississippi basketball. Orston in the paint, deflected away, recovers it, maybe shuffled her feet. Yep, that's the call. And it's a turnover for Tennessee. What a block from Anastasia Hayes underneath. Yeah, she got the step right there, the little extra step, stutter step. Bulldogs within five. Fourth quarter Sunday against Old Miss. They only scored six points. Looking to play a full four quarters was the mission for Sam Purcell and his crew. Courtney Weber from the free throw line now. Walker up ahead. She missed Stripling on the inside, posting up. We settled down, blocking off Horston's right. She steps up and knocks down the mid range. Horston up to 16 in the point column. Six rebounds as well, five assists, stuff at the stat sheet. Here's Poe. Freshman looking for a career-high night. Smith off the screen, jumper off the mark. I love the actions that Mississippi State is running. They're cutting so hard and moving so well without the ball. On the balance side, two shots for Jordan Walker. Jordan Horston uses that screen from Stripling, knocks down the one dribble pull up. 
great offense by the senior. Orson just nine on Sunday, four of ten from the floor. She's knocked down seven shots here tonight. Project free throw working out for Jordan Walker. She hits her first. And listen in to see if we hear some chance. Not that time. Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> I'm, over here, I'm staring at everybody's mouth. I'm like, where is it? Where is it? Not that time. No. One for two. Jordan Walker stay at eight. Smith slips on the floor. Kind of disrupts the whole rhythm there for Mississippi State. And a turnover. Tess Darby. Baseball one-arm throw to Sarah Puckett. Up with one herself. Forced an offensive board. Yes, back up strong. Great effort by Jordan Horston to continue to crash those loose boards. All effort from Tennessee for those offensive rebounds tonight. Crowds up in their intensity here at TBA. Carter, yes, and one much needed bucket from Jessica Carter and the Dogs. That all started with Jordan Walker fighting over that ball screen, disrupted that play. Jordan Horson being strong on the boards. The teammates love it. We love when we see that second chance effort. And one opportunity cashed in for Jessica Carter. Horston eight rebounds, four of them have come on the offensive end. This type of plays bring energy on both ends that we just saw from Horston and Carter. Dogs in zone coverage. Horston tangled up, couldn't get enough space. Swooping in, off it's a rebound, and thrown down hard. Jordan Walker went up and grabbed it. She did a great job by cutting in for that re rebound on the back end. Mississippi State players had their back turned. Didn't see her crash the board. Jordan Walker not the tallest out on the floor, 5'8", but she is a really good rebounder. She's got five rebounds. One point last year, Coach Harper said she thought she was the best rebounder on the team. <laughs> As he keeps possession. Tennessee has to get the ball inside. Five on the shot clock, Walker lets it fly and can't get anything. That's what Mississippi State wants them to do. But you have Franklin posting up hard. You got to give it to her. You got to suck that defense in so you can have those open looks out on the perimeter. Feels like a big possession here for Mississippi State with N7 crowd really getting involved. Here's Poe. She's been so good from wow. distance. Yes, why not? She's got a career high. And Horston was in hers. That was, I think she even contested it a little bit and got her hand on the ball and she still knocked it in. 21 points for the freshman Poe. That's her sixth three-pointer of the evening. Mississippi State within four. Franklin. Exactly. Walker open this time. Yes. Answer. She drew three defenders in. Had Jordan Walker out for an open look on the perimeter. That's what you have to do against this type of defense. 6-3 of the night for Tennessee. Up that lead back to seven. Poe on Jackson and a foul off ball. It's going to be on Jordan Horston. She's pleading her case. It looks like she's saying she was holding her. Letting the ref know to keep an eye out for that in the future. It's just Horson's first. Step out for a bit. He's on the entry. Beats Powell. Wide open layup. Great drive by Anastasia Hayes. 
She's got six. Mississippi State, they've made three of their last tries from the floor. Bread and butter for the Bulldogs has been defense. And they got him here in the fourth. Powell, no good. Rebound, out of play, last touch, Mississippi State. Things heating up here in the fourth. Bulldogs within five, down to the wire in Knoxville. Back at Knoxville, under five to play, Tennessee by five. Third game of SEC play for both these teams. Tennessee looking for a 3-0 and start for what will be the second straight year. You get to this point of the season, Cam, and you really need your stars to step up. We've seen some really bright studs perform tonight. Exactly who we expected to step up is doing exactly that. They're playing beautiful basketball right now. Rakia going against her former team. A rising to the occasion, doing what is expected of her. Then you got Poe on the other end, a freshman playing beautiful basketball right now. So much upside to her game. That's what we expected when we had the last two SEC Player of the Week. You expect good performances from both. They both have treated us to that. Stepping up when their team needs them. Indeed, Andy. Fun to watch. Hey, let's welcome back in Sarah Detweiler. Yeah, guys, in that huddle right there, Coach Purcell said, it's a five-point game. We've got five minutes left. I need you to be tough, and if we keep chopping the wood, we've got a chance. Guys. Chopping the wood. That's what he said he wanted from his team. He wanted a full four quarters. Felt like that fourth on Sunday against Ole Miss, not quite up to where they want to be, just six points in those final ten minutes. He wants to see a full four quarters tonight. And again, a, a five point difference is going to be a, a situation where it's just one possession at a time. Jackson a drive, no offensive board, puck it back up. Finally, Mississippi State able to wrangle it away. Big possession here for the Bulldogs within five. Weber. End-to-man defense from Tennessee. Off the screen, Jordan fumbled. On the ground, Ja'Kayla Jordan back. Carter underneath, she'll shoot two. Sarah Puckett almost had the takeaway, but credit Ja'Kayla Jordan, she stayed with it the whole time. Jordan, she came off that curl so hard, fumbled it a little bit, was able to get it back to Carter. She didn't get the and one, but now she has an opportunity at the line. That possession started with that effort by Jordan. Important free throws there. Carter misses the first. A rebound away from a double-double. Had one in the SEC opener, 21 points, 10 rebounds against Vandy. Lane violation there on Tennessee, so Carter will get another shot. Mississippi State struggled from the line, 9 of 18 against Ole Miss Sunday. That time Carter gets it. 1 of 2 to push it to 4. Mississippi State liking this zone defense. Horston trying to break the zone. Darby for three. Front iron. But offensive board, that's been the story for Tennessee. Their 22nd offensive rebound. Second chance points at a premium in the SEC. Horston mid-range, thought about it. Nope. Jackson. Up. Oh. Horston again swoops in for the board, and the foul, are you kidding me? Jordan, Horston, I, ooh, we gotta find a nickname for her. Effort, flat out effort. Rakia Jackson, 
wasn't able to knock it down, but Jordan Horston not settling, being strong. What an offensive board. My Wooden top 25 mid-season watch list honoree. Three-point play. Those are the type of game-changing plays you expect from Jordan Horson. She's got 21 and 10 rebounds now. A double-double for Horston all in one swoop. A big-time play. Inside, stolen away from Jasmine Franklin. Mississippi State was looking for Carter. Walker right corner into Horston. Working on Hayes, almost gave it away. Franklin, five on the shot clock. What a move, can't finish. Horston yeah. again, oh, offensive the board. She's there, back up. Yes, resilience from Jordan Horston. You gotta love it. Wow. Cannot deny Jordan Horston here in the fourth. Tennessee back up nine. Full takeover mode. Offensive Good foul. We'll go Tennessee way. Things are clicking right now for Tennessee in these last two minutes. Jordan Horston just being relentless on the boards, going after it every single time the shot goes up. And Franklin stepping up like she always does. Sacrificing her body. You got the two seniors stepping up in big moments like this. This has been one of the more impressive rebounding performances, I'd say, in the SEC this season by any team. 48 boards at the moment. You're out rebounding another team in the top 25 of reboundings of the nation. 25 offensive boards. They're going to look at this. to clarify who the foul was on. You, you saw the contact underneath where Jasper Franklin went down. But look to make sure. They're going to confirm. Looks like it was on Alana Smith. Horston, 23 points, 12 rebounds for her. The foul is on Alana Smith. Little press here for Mississippi State, full court press. Horston open now. Three on one break. Jackson, Franklin, yes. Bulldogs need a bucket in a hurry. That's what they got. Carter. And now the Bulldogs will start fouling. If you're Tennessee, you want to eat up majority of the clock, but when you have a great look like this one right here, you got to take advantage of it. Tennessee so good down the stretch in this game. First real tense situations of conference play. You win by double digits on the road in Gainesville. At home against Alabama, pretty comfortable. You didn't trail. Mississippi State, they did not make it easy. They did not, not make it comfortable. And they still aren't. And they still aren't. Within four there, with under four. But Tennessee, they... I think this is simply just a game where Tennessee was just out rebounding. Mississippi State being relentless on the boards and crashing hard. Jordan Horston, Rakia Jackson, all of the above, everyone. Bulldogs 
Playing a bit of man-to-man -man at this point. They're not fouling. Looking for a stop. Horston cut. Horston finish. Great find. Great cut. It's the Jordan Horston show here in the fourth. Picks up another rebound. 11 points and seven rebounds here just in the fourth quarter from Horston. And Bulldogs in no hurry to foul here. Tennessee up that lead to double digits. Hayes does get a hand in there, swoops one away. And it's going to be a timeout for Mississippi State. They're back with it single digits just like that. And Purcell will talk things over. But Cam, just if you can, try to put into words what Jordan Horston has done here in the fourth quarter, not just on the offensive end, but she has seven rebounds this quarter too. Andy, I'll try. She is just playing so well right now. All season long she has been, but tonight it's her effort to attack the boards. Effort, Andy, effort. Yeah. I just, I don't know what other word I to use. There's not a lot of good ones to describe the play that Horson has had. And Coach Harper said after the game against Alabama on Sunday, just any time the ball is in her hand, she is such a threat. That doesn't matter if she's scoring or not, if she's passing, if she's rising up, trying to get a rebound. She has so much versatility to her game. You can mix and match, put her wherever. A fun player to coach, she says, and, and she is really showing all the intangibles tonight. If she's, if there's a guard on her, she can post them up. She has that length and that ability to score above them, but also she can guard any position because she's quick enough so she can keep up with the faster guards, but lengthy enough to block a shot as well. It's, it's fun when you have a player like that. Tennessee now calls a timeout right after Mississippi State gives us time to talk to you about the ICC and gymnastics season. That starts up Friday night. Alabama, they're in the top ten. They're number seven in the WCGA preseason rankings. As always, gymnastics will take over the ICC network every single Friday night here in the year. This week we got non-conference slate, Michigan State, Crimson Tide at Coleman Coliseum. That coverage is at 7 Eastern, 6 Central. Always watch it streaming live on the ESPN app, wherever you're at. Busy time across collegiate athletics. We got basketball getting into SEC play. Gymnastics starting up. All the spring sports are starting to wake up from their winter break. And things just don't get easier in the SEC. You go from one tough game to the next, and that's what Mississippi State's experiencing. Ole Miss here to Knoxville. A little bit of a, an altercation there between Jordan Horston and Anastasia Hayes. That's the beautiful thing about SEC basketball is that everyone is a tough competitor. The best league to play in. They might take a look at this and see if there's anything worth the technical. It was right as both teams were coming out of the huddle. Horston and Hayes just got yeah, a bit of a, a, a tangle, and Horston maybe a, a bit of a push, and they sent them both to their respected sides here. And I mean, anything you can do if you're Mississippi State to try to win you some extra possessions here, win, win you some extra free throw shots down the stretch, you're going to do. Even if that means maybe trying to get in underneath the get, skin get, of some Lady Bulls. Get in their head, yep. Anastasia Hayes, former Lady Vol, her freshman season, her sixth year of play now at Mississippi State. We've already talked about how she's reinvented her game. Homecoming of sorts for her back in her home state. Taking an extra peek at this pitch in Tennessee. On Sunday, they'll be back on the road. They'll go to Vanderbilt, not too far, a little bit west of Nashville. Nine and seven Commodores. They've got Ole Miss tonight. 
big one on the other end for Mississippi State. They got number one South Carolina coming to the town. And that's the question. Is, is South Carolina, they, they lost one in conference play last year. Are they going to lose this year in SEC play? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. South Carolina is a force. Mississippi State, though, they have great pieces on their team. They lack that depth from their bench, although. But the pieces that they do have play their role extremely well. And again, Mississippi State, they dropped the game on Sunday, their first loss in SEC play. Right now, trailing by nine. They're fighting to get back in it, but tough schedule. You got South Carolina coming to town. Doesn't get easier. Really hard stretch. You're able to stay at home for that one. College Station, you got Auburn, Kentucky, and then a really quick battle with Ole Miss right out of the gates again. I'm sure they have that date circled for Ole Miss, that rematch. That was a dog fight, in the words of Coach Purcell. This one has had some of that same type feel. We've seen some tempers on both sides flare up a bit. You know, Horson not happy with the decisioning, whatever it is. These two teams will get another chance at one another from Starkville. You see him still talking to one another here. They've been going out it all night. They're still talking to one another here. It won't be a technical administered. I right, just play on here. And they're looking to see if there's any flagrant involved. None of the sorts. A lot of play, it'll stay Tennessee way. How about the night, though, from Brie Chapeau? Her team battling here. Single digits, but she has had a breakout game. She showed up and showed out tonight. The freshman playing so well with so much confidence. There's the foul that time on Horston. A little under seven seconds, Tennessee will put up these free throws and they're gonna call it a night. Lady Vols will improve to three and O in SEC play for the second straight year. They were seven and O last year. Again, I'm sure as Kelly Harper will say, not how you start, but how you finish. But this certainly is a good start. A very good start. It seems like that tough non-conference schedule is paying off. Orsa two for two there, back to double digits. Another timeout for Mississippi State. Talking things over, they got one more possession. Long conclusion to this game. Tennessee going to Vanderbilt this Sunday. That's what they've got to work with on the horizon. Full in-state battle with Vanderbilt, always fun. Team that lost to Mississippi State earlier this year already, 72 to 44, so you can kind of have a gauge. At College Station as well, like Mississippi State. In every game, it just feels like this conference gets so and so balanced every single year. You know, you have your players at the top. Clearly, South Carolina a favorite, but every game, so, such a battle. Every team, again, can step up and have a great night. You got to come and play hard every night in this conference. One more rebound for Horston to close out. What's a fantastic night for her and the Lady Balls. Tennessee improves to 3-0, and make it three straight double-digit wins in conference play as well. Final score, Tennessee 80, Mississippi State 69. Thanks so long here from Cameron Harris, Sarah Detweiler. I'm Andy Brock from Knoxville. Again, Tennessee 
a winner. Director Carter Mills, producer Allison Paris. Watch this entire game on replay as well as other games, mainly the ESPN networks. Download the ESPN app. Presentation of ESPN.